kids, I'm going to bring the children's message to you today, and I just want to say a note of appreciation and thanks to our pastor for all the things that he does to help us, to bring church to us, and all the ways he's helped me to do this. When I was a kid, I could run and jump with the best of you, but I'm older now, and it's much harder for me to walk some days, so he's helping me with this, and I really thank him for that. The thing that I want to talk to you about today is the Bible. To me, the Bible is a letter written to me by God. I like to read it because I like to learn more about God and I want to hear the things he has to say to me about my life and about living and all the things I want to know about him. And I like to listen, too, to hear what he has to say to me. Um, when, I, when Jesus was here on earth, he, he sat down a lot, a lot of times, maybe under a tree or on a hillside, and he would, people would gather around him and he would tell stories from the Bible. You've heard of other stories from the other teachers some Sundays from the Bible, and that's what Jesus did. He had the Old Testament stories then. He would tell the people that was listening to him, and he had told them about things that were happening another day, and... They would gather around and listen to him. And one day he was talking to the, the crowd of people and uh, there was some mothers with little babies coming, with little, little babies carrying them in their arms like Tyla and Willow and Devin and some of the older kids like uh, the Londrigan kids and some of you other kids sitting out there. And the mothers wanted to bring them to Jesus so that he could pray for them. And the disciples were getting nervous about that. They said, oh, don't bother him. He's, got busy. He's busy. He's got important things to do. And Jesus heard them talking about that and telling them not to bring the children. And in Matthew chapter 19, 14, this is what he said. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And then he placed his hands on them. And I'm sure he prayed for them. Jesus loves the little children, and he loves older people like me, and he loves all the people in between, too. So <clears throat> that, was, that was a thing that Jesus liked to do, is what I'm doing and what others are doing to bring these stories to you. But times are confusing now. Times are confusing for you, I'm sure. First you go to school, then you don't go to school. You have to wear a mask, wash your hands all the time, get your temperature taken, you have, can't do this, you can't do that. Rules, rules, rules. It's enough. It makes your head spin. It makes my head spin. There's so many rules. And we don't know what to do. And you know that happened during the times of the Bible? When Jesus was talking to the people, they, there's lots of rules as you try to read the Bible and talk about things in the Bible. Let's do this, don't do that. And I'm sure their heads started to spin because there was a teacher of the law and he came to Jesus and he said, Teacher, what, what, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Well, Jesus knows, God knows everything. He knows everything about us. And he knows before it ever happens. And he knew that that was the greatest commandments, but it was going to be hard for us to even keep those two. And he knew to follow him, it was going to be hard. So he had an apostle, Paul, who was a follower of, of God, and he was writing things in the Bible. He wrote several books in the New Testament. And he wrote this in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. In 2 Corinthians, he wrote this, um, this verse, which said, he was preparing us already, he said, But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's tricks, he will trick your mind somehow, and you will be led astray from the sincere and pure devotion to Christ. He wanted us to know that to stay close to him was the safest place to be. And so, you know, it says in John, too, I read, read in the chapter of John, I don't remember just where that is in John, but 
uh, it's, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. And if we listen to him, he is our good shepherd. He, li he knows what we need and he knows what we need to hear. And years ago when my children were small in this church, they did a musical called We Like Sheep. And I remember that, and I remember so well a song that they sang in that. And I always liked that song because it says, Jesus is a gentleman. He never forces his way in. He stands knocking at the door until you let him in. Jesus is a gentleman who waits so patiently and prays that you will open that door of your heart so that he may come in and make your heart his throne. And the song goes on to say, so let him in today, let him in to stay. Open up your heart and say, Jesus, please come in. You know, years and years ago, I let Jesus into my heart and I ask him there to stay. But every morning when I get up, I have to open that door again and ask him to come in and dwell on the throne of my heart so that I can walk with him. And I hope that's what you will do too. I hope you always remember to focus your thoughts on Jesus and walk with him. Lord, I thank you that we have you as our good shepherd and that you lead us as we walk through these times. And I thank you that you never never ever will leave us and I thank you Lord that we can count on you thank you for all that you are to us in Jesus name I pray amen